people. Just listen to Abigail Schreier, a vocal proponent of that theory, laying all of this out. If you want to see Brainwash, check out these young teenagers who suddenly decide they're transgender. They immediately cut off their families. They very often drop out of school. They are very often start tattooing themselves and using drugs. And they are creating a, a, a world for themselves that is so healthy, so built around sexuality, and the, have, they lose all their hobbies. Their only hobby is being transgender. Oh, OK. <laughs> So there is a lot there, but let me just address the claim that trans kids lose all their hobbies, because I will point out that when they try to have some, like, I don't know, school sports, for example, <laughs> a bunch of asshole adults try to keep them from doing it. Shreya sometimes dresses her argument up by using the term rapid-onset gender dysphoria, which is total horseshit. It comes from a study published by a researcher in 2018 hypothesising that some kids identify as trans due to peer pressure. But it's worth you knowing, that study was based on a survey of parents, not actual trans kids, and it targeted parents from organisations <laughs> dedicated... OK, hold on, we got to go back. OK, there's a very interesting thing that happened here. So he plays a clip of Abigail Schreier, who's talking about social contagion. And he doesn't address her point specifically. He instead pivots to this weird non-point joke about oh well in this clip she complains that tran that a lot of trans kids will then wrap their entire identity around the transness and kind of isolate themselves from other groups yeah and so john point. oliver's response to that is this very kind of dishonest shifting of well they try to have social lives outside of that in sports but they're not allowed to because of laws right mm -hmm. which doesn't really address her point at all because that's such a minority, as John, as John Oliver even said himself, that's such a minority. He said there was literally one person in the state of South Dakota that that affected, or that didn't affect. That was trans before that law even went into, went into effect. Okay, right. so that's obviously not what related to Abigail Schreier's point. If this is such a small amount of people, which is John's argument, it's such a small amount of people, why are we doing this? Yeah. So that's the first. So he, so he doesn't actually address what her point is. Of course He just kind not. of subverts it. Well, I just and then go ahead. Well, I'm saying, and then he moves on to away from the social contagion point to the rapid onset gender dysphoria point, which I don't know if he realizes he's doing it, but it's a it's, it's a dishonest shifting because it's something that you always like to bring up. There's mountains of evidence for social contagion, yes, and there isn't as much evidence for rapid onset gender dysphoria, and so that's part of why he's shifting the argument away from social contagion. Yeah, I, I hate this because I bring up social contagion all the time. And I knew about social contagion before transgenderism became a social contagion. Like so, right. social contagion, the most famous ones are around suicide. So we have this massive body of evidence for social contagion that goes back 50 years. And they, the left is acting like it's some sort of conspiracy theory by the right which i just it totally offends my sensibilities when they're supposed to be the party of science you know standing under the banner of science all of this kind of stuff and a lot of people i mean uh that guy fd signifier i was arguing with him in some comment section and i brought up the social contagion thing and he's basically saying until there is some peer-reviewed study that links transgenderism specifically to right. social contagion it's like it's bullshit when i'm thinking i mean they've got social social contagion has affected suicide eating disorders uh they are talking about it causing tourette's now it's like there's all of these different things that can be social contagions why would transgenderism be any different what is the special yeah. thing about transgenderism that means it can't be possibly so, uh, socially spread? I mean, if suicide can be socially spread, what is what is different about transgenderism? You would think. You yeah. Would think, right. Just you turn on your mind. Just use your logic, okay? Just you do some thinking upstairs. <laughs> it's very simple. You know what would like, stop it? Confirmation bias. You just think, <laughs> you're like, I don't want to believe this. I don't want Adam to be right. Mm -hmm. I don't know, school sports, for example, <laughs> a bunch of asshole adults try to keep them from doing it. 
Shrey sometimes dresses her argument up by using the term rapid onset gender dysphoria, which is total horseshit. It comes from a study published by a researcher in 2018 hypothesising that some kids identify as trans due to peer pressure. But it's worth you knowing, that study was based on a survey of parents, not actual trans kids, and it targeted parents from organisations dedicated to opposing trans ideology, which so, is so, instantly... Well, so if you, you identify as, as, as goth because you start hanging out with a bunch of goth people, right? Mm -hmm. Is that going to be peer pressure? And are your parents not going to be able to identify that in you since they were at one time were kids <laughs> like being peer well, pressured by their friends to become to get a tattoo or drink too much or do whatever? Yeah. Well, in the big problem with the study in the way it's now I try to remember because the there was some issue where when the study was originally published there was some error in how the journal reported the purpose of the study. And I don't remember what the original was. All I, mm -hmm. all I can see is the way it says now, but the way, the way it says the way it's written now, I think a lot of people are very dishonest with how they talk about the study because the study wasn't suggesting what John Oliver said. According to the study itself, it says the purpose of this study uh, was to document and explore the observations and describe the resulting present the resulting presentation of gender dysphoria uh, appearing rapidly, which is inconsistent with existing research literature. That's all it says. Right. It's not. And when you read the conclusion, the conclusion of the study is like this merits more research to look into. It's not suggesting that that like Dr. Lisa Lipman is not suggesting that she's found the definitive answer for gender dysphoria or that there's a definitive 100% social contagion. All she's saying is, wow, a lot of parents uh, notice a rapid change in their children that didn't exist before. And this merits looking into. That's all she's saying. And then instead, so, and John is about to bring up this point, which doesn't, they all bring up when they talk about the study, which is irrelevant. They say, oh, the parents who were the population chosen for this, a lot of them were pulled from internet message boards where it was parents complaining about their children basically being trans, or they're not necessarily on board with their kids being trans. And so therefore that invalidates the study. Right. But it doesn't because the study is just saying, oh, these parents said that their kids did not identify as trans when they are young and only started to identify as trans in high school. That's all the study needs to know. Right. So then it doesn't matter whether the parents or not are in favor or against their transness. Yeah. Someone, so. some parent who their kid was trans from an early age over and has had gender dysphoria over years and years and years wouldn't need to be included in the study. Right. They And they could still, yeah, a parent whose kid identified as trans at a young age could still be against their kid transitioning. Sure. So that's like, that's not relevant to the study. The study was just like, oh, we're looking for parents who say that their kids uh, just came out as trans and had no previous history you know, right. related to that. Study claiming that all postal workers are terrifying hell demons sent to attack your family, but then learning that the researchers only surveyed a collection of anxious dogs. <laughs> That's some heavy sampling bias that clearly skewed your results. <laughs> and to be very clear, there is ample evidence of gender variance throughout human history. What? How is that? I mean, how is that a, a biased sample? So, what are you talking about with... With Lisa Lipman's? Well, well, I guess yeah, the, with the, the parents, it's not. I mean, right. What? What are they not going to answer the questions honestly? Or? That's what I guess. That's what they're suggesting is that they're basically lying. They're going to pretend like the their kid did say that they were trans their whole life, and then the parents are lying about it now or something. Right. I guess. Hmm. Um. But the but the second thing he brought up is so ridiculous. He's like, he brings up this article that I read, and it's like. Um, the National oh, Geographic article. Yeah. There's ample evidence of gender variance throughout human history. Okay. That's so... Wait. So, and it's so weird. I think this might be the most dishonest John Oliver segment I've ever seen. Because he keeps bringing up 
so, like irrelevant points to counter things, but you don't really notice they're irrelevant. So the claim Lisa Lippman is making, or the, actually not even the straw man claim that John Oliver is claiming Lisa Lippman made, which he didn't, is that there's this thing called rapid onset gender dysphoria, which is a, essentially a social contagion where a bunch of girls specifically will just identify as trans because of social pressure. Okay. That's the claim John Oliver is trying to debunk. Mm -hmm. And his way of debunking that is to say, oh, well, there's been trans people all throughout human history. Yeah, that's a non sequitur. How is, yeah, how does that debunk anything? Lisa Lippman is not saying there's no trans people. She never made a claim. She never made any sort of claim that everyone with gender dysphoria or every transgender person is faking it. That was never a claim. She never made that claim. She doesn't even believe that. That's, that's a complete fabrication. Yeah, she's not against trans people. That's the other problem with this is they, like their giant straw man of anyone who is researching this stuff is that they're just a huge transphobe and they want right. trans people never to exist. Exactly. Which in the interview with Lisa Lippman, she was very clear. No, trans people exist. They're real. She was very careful not to offend them, obviously. So, I mean, she cares. Right. And they, and so this article, like, you know, you scan through it and it's like some historian, you know, gives you like a handful of examples of like throughout, you know, the thousands of years of human history, like there's like three or four trans people. You're like, okay, what is, <laughs> what the fuck does that prove? Yeah. It's... <laughs> like, that it's very rare, I guess, because you, you need like three people across like 10,000 years as, as, your, as your evidence. What about what? variants throughout human history? Yeah, it's just, it's, it's like, absurd. Come on. What are these arguments? We were talking about social contagion. What about gender variants throughout human yeah. history? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. That's a little off topic, John. You know, if your argument is, oh, there's not a massive spike in people identifying as trans because trans people have existed all throughout history and your evidence is here's three or four examples <laughs> in the last 5,000 years. I mean, you're kind of making the opposite point. Yeah. It's not like they said, oh, by the way, we found a society where like 10% of the population was trans or something. It just, it's so weird to me that we've built this entire fictional world that's established enough that John Oliver can make some sort of piece of content like this. Mm -hmm. That's just so fictional. It's all based on fiction. All of this is just not accurate in any way shape or form yeah i know it's crazy. yeah he's here talking about it like oh yeah this is the this is the world we live in right and all just basically to win pol elections this is all politically based how is this any different than evangelicalism or or it's not it's exactly the same yeah it's exactly the same. 